Welcome in, guys. I'm here with my man Goldie today. We're going to be breaking down the slate um, for this weekend, week six. Okay, it's going to be a big week. Um, we got we got to keep it keep it going this week, and uh, we got some good news for you guys this week. We got Goldie's projections now in the Saber Sim on True DFS projections. It gives us multiple different projections. And he aggregates the projections with like multiple different sites. So it's like eight sites or more. Even he's adding more coming into one, giving you guys a badass aggregate system. Excuse my language, but it's going to be sweet. We'll talk about goalies projections next, but first I want to recap last week. If you look over last week, we have the playbook that I put out every Sunday, usually by 9am. It goes over some things. We talked about Bryce Hall in here. We talked about Leonard Fournette, uncle Lenny, we talked about Jeff Wilson. These guys were key last week, guys. These three running backs really tore it up in the slate last week. You had a combination of these guys in the cash backs. You guys killed it. We did have some low on picks in here. Kamaro's actually in the million winning lineup, I believe. Let's check it out. No, Fournette, Hall, and Wilson were in the 444 million lineup. And then the other one had, yeah, had Kamara in it. Yeah, everyone thought he didn't do good, but he had like eight catches and 90 yards. So that, that PBR on DraftKings gets you there, guys. On this price tag, we also talked about Cowboys defense. We had, you know, like di different tight ends that get to get you there, you know, you know, so like ever caught touchdown pass, you know, Goddard was catching a lot of cats. Kittle, we're going to talk about him again this week. Higby, chalk again this week, you know, we had Jacoby Myers went off last week back as a cheap play. All these plays coming in on my picks, guys, you'll be able to check. Baltimore is one of the stacks. So, guys, you'll be able to tune into that. As always, on Sunday, with through the True DFS site, I always have it posted by 9 a.m. You'll be able to get the picks, read the review, see what you're building lineups, and then coming in, in into those lineups after the 9 a.m. Then we're back live at 11, talking about the slate. And, uh, yeah, all right, Goldie, how are you doing today? We got your projections up. Actually, I'm sorting by average, but we'll be able to compare. We can sort by Goldies, um, or we can sort by average. I don't know what you want to do, but this – these projections, true DFS aggregates projections, guys. We bring in multiple sources and we put them all in one and we get an aggregate. We do have Saber Sims custom projections in here. We have true DFS, which is sheets aggregate. And now we have goalies projections here, which are multiple sites and in growing. So it's it's pretty exciting, guys, to be over at True DFS. Um, this is a Friday night show we're doing. Um, we'll post it on Saturday so you'll be able to get it. Um, but it's going to be a good one. We're going to be breaking down the slate. We got good ownership projections. We got all three of those up as well. We'll be able to compare. So, um, Goldie, uh, how you doing? Uh, let's let you talk for a minute. Yeah, dude. Let's. Uh, I'm stoked for this week. Um, we we've been kind of talking about it, uh, like going over the slate a little bit. I think it's a. I think it's a good week. Um, there's going to be a couple pretty obvious spots you can get to, and that usually means it's a pretty good tournament week. Um. You can, you know, there's in the in the afternoon games in particular, you know, the uh, the Buffalo KC game. It's going to see a little bit of ownership, but probably not as much as it should, given, um, you know, given the offenses in the game. And then the the Arizona Seattle game, uh, that's that's garnering most of the ownership right now. Um, everybody in that game coming in very very heavy. You got some injuries. Right, we got James Conner out in that game, so Eno Benjamin is like a free cash square at 4,600. Basically, um, you got uh, um, Kenneth Walker; he's going to be in the backfield for Seattle now too. So, um, all of these guys, Tyler Lockett and and Gino, obviously still pretty cheap. Um, and you know the the rest of the market is is pretty high on them so i think that gives us uh, some pretty good opportunities to look to some of these other games you know we got whatever uh nine games um or eight games in the early part uh of the day and really not a lot of ownership coming to them so um you know not as we can see from these aggregate projections um you know there's not a whole hell of a lot of difference between some of these top end guys you know, just a quarterback, for example, um, you know, Josh Allen is, is kind of leading the way, right, at, at 8,200. Um, and naturally, probably should, right? But right behind him, at least in price, is Lamar Jackson. And, you know, you got Lamar um, coming in as of right now at a fraction of the ownership, um, you know, about 30, 40% of the ownership of Josh Allen, right? So that's a kind of a, 
you know, one of those spots where you can just target a different game, um, get a little bit different. And then if you still want to get to, you know, some of the, the chalk pieces in the other um, really popular games and you can do that. But um, yeah, man, overall, it, uh, it looks like a, a pretty cool tournament week. Um, you know, there, and obviously there's some good cash plays too, you know, some cheap running backs that you can get to and some value expensive receivers that you can get to as well. Uh, in some, some decently high total games. So, um, you know, looking forward to, you know, going position by position here and, you know, talking through some, some initial plays that we're looking at. Yeah. I like everything you said there, Goldie. Um, definitely, definitely going to be an interesting weekend. I think, uh, we got injury news for Baltimore too, right? Uh, Bateman's out again this week, I believe. So Durvaney, 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 Devin and Devin Robinson. Duvernay. Yeah. Yeah. Prochet, there's going to be some cheap receivers there. A couple 3K guys and a 4-7 guy is going to be leading the way. Obviously, Lamar and Mark Andrews is like the optimal stack, I think, in that game. Uh, but the Giants have been playing better this year. They're off to a decent start. You know, Barkley looks good um, as well. So there there could be a decent stack in that game where, where you're talking about grabbing Lamar and Andrews and Barkley run back. That could be could be a spot to go to this week. And um, – yeah, I think I think we can get started here at quarterback. I think you know there's a lot of good options. Um, but one thing I do want to caution everybody: the big week that when Seattle was a little bit, I guess they weren't as chalky, but the week they won, the guy that won the Millie with Seattle, um, that week Geno Smith was popping a little bit, and then Balockett was popping more, but ended up being more Metcalf that week. You know, stacking that game and having like three runbacks of um, the Lions that week, he won the game. You know, this this Arizona-Seattle game is kind of setting up similar vibes to that, it feels. I mean, I do usually fade a massive chalk game like that, but if you run a cash optimal right now, you're going to get, like, you know, Lockett and DK in the same lineup. You're going to get, you know, Walkers in there even. You're going to get Benjamin in there. All these guys are priced like 5K. Lockett, 5'6", five, Walker, 5'4", five, Benjamin, 4'6", DK, 6'8". You're getting mass upside in this game with all 5k guys and that allows you to play like mark andrews or kelsey in the tight end and josh allen qb if you're playing these 4k 5k receivers and running backs right so that that's going to be where your cash lineup is you'll be able to get that in the playbook guys i'll give out my cash lineup or most of the plays in the playbook on sunday you'll be able to see that at true dfs well i literally run it right there in the morning what it is with updated projections i'll put my cash lineup in and, and then last week the cash lineup did actually pretty well i didn't have it in enough stuff that's for damn sure um it was like one of the top it scored over 200 points as a cash line it was pretty good in dk um, but let's get let's get into Q, QBs this week. I think we had some good talks. I'll let Goldie talk about some of the sleepers that we talked about before the show. And uh, all right, Goldie, let's see what you got. Yeah, man. Like so, as I just mentioned, like the the top couple of guys, right? They're going to be Josh Allen and Geno Smith um, in those in those two spots. But Patrick Mahomes, he's also in that super high total game, right down there with Buffalo, and. And he's not coming in all that popular, right? We got him sub six percent, and um, well, I'll tell you what, like even at at relatively uh, similar price points to Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson, um, I mean, Mahomes has just as much upside throwing the football as, as those two guys do, right? So obviously, there's a bit more rushing upside with Allen and Jackson, um, you know. So, but you know, look, like Mahomes, he could throw five scores here. Uh, before you blink an eye in this game, and, so and don't forget, Mahomes does run the ball a little bit too. I mean, he he's yeah, not, yeah, he's not the not like a non-mobile quarterback. He does, you know, get a couple sneaks, not sneaks, but he gets a couple like where he's taking off. He's under pressure lately a little bit, and he's taking off running for the. So yeah, at six percent ownership, I mean, he just scored forty fantasy points last week, guys, and four touchdowns and a, you know, and a lot of yards in that game. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, I mean, he like, valid point there. He's got he's got what five different weapons, you know. Obviously, Kelsey scored sixteen times last week or whatever, but <laughs> um, you know he's got uh, he's got three receivers that he can get the ball to, um, and a couple of guys out of the backfield that they'll still use in the passing game too. Um, and he'll 
you know, he'll scramble a little bit down on the goal line or whatever too. So um, I think he's a, a, a decent pivot. If you are playing some of the, the chalkier running backs or receivers or something, um, I think you can get to some Mahomes, for example. Um, we talked before the show. I like getting to a good bit of Lamar Jackson too um, in this, uh, in this Baltimore Giants game, uh, especially if you want to be playing, you know, some DK, uh, or some, some Tyler Lockett type plays, whatever Cooper cup, um, you know, so, or Steph Diggs, you know, some of the more popular plays, I think you can pivot and play some Lamar Jackson as well. I mean, this guy has a, uh, a monster share of, of the offense in Baltimore. And as you said earlier, Rashad Bateman's out, you know, so, um, that really narrows his, his pool to where he's, going to be able to throw the football and that usually means at least with Lamar that um you know that that increases his his rushing upside right so um now JK Dobbins I I would probably not to say I would stay off of him because the Giants are really giving it up on the ground but um I'd really just kind of prefer to get to Lamar you can play him with Andrews you can play him with Duvernay or you can play him naked you know you you don't really need to be stacking Lamar necessarily and again you're you're getting him a what sub seven percent or something like that. Um, and you know, is he really, is Josh Allen going to outperform Lamar Jackson at a two and a half to one clip here? I mean, I don't know. It seems pretty aggressive, right? So um seems like a pretty decent ownership pivot play uh, on those two top guys. Now, if you want to like get to some, some different builds down cheaper, uh, you know, with some more expensive running backs, more expensive uh, receivers, you're probably going to need to save some, you know, th- that tight end and a quarterback. So if you want to pivot off of uh, guys like Gino uh, at 5,700, um, we talked about getting to some Kirk Cousins in in the the uh, the Minnesota Miami game. Now Miami has been giving it up in spades through the air this season, um, and they got their third string quarterback you know, coming in and starting a game for them. So um, they're Miami's offense kind of unlikely to be able to move the ball, at least at the same clip that Tua and Teddy would be able to. Um, so that really plays into the hands for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Um, now Miami's run defense is pretty decent. So they, and their pass defense is, is really, really bad. So um, I think it opens up, you know, the, the passing game for some Justin Jefferson, some Adam Thielen type plays, um, or even Irv Smith, you know, you want to stack them there. So I think that's a decent pivot. Uh, Kirk com- coming in, you know, sub 5% right now. And everybody in the Vikings game, uh, or on the Vikings rather, is is coming in sub 10%. So, um, you know, if you want to play some chalkier pieces of those other couple of games, I think that's a, a decent little place to start. Um, in pivoting off some of the chalkier quarterbacks to uh, to help you get different, but still get exposure to the to the spots that are really likely to go off. Yeah, um, that's some good information. I really like your takes on that. Uh, I'll probably add. Let me let me add my takes here a little bit too, as everyone kind of wants to know what I'm doing. Um, I definitely like these top three plays. These are always my three favorite quarterbacks. I do stack. Usually quarterback heavy, but lately this year we've been getting to some of these Geno Smiths where they're cheap and going off for 40 points. And I, I think Kirk Cousins fits that bill as, as Goalie just talked about. Um, another guy you can probably talk about is is, is Trevor Lawrence down here at 56. Yep. He's got some cheap stacking options. I know Indiana, uh, the Indianapolis plays a little bit slower and they usually run the ball. But Jacksonville's been off to a fast start this year. They have had a decent game where they put up a lot of points on the Chargers. Um, and I, and I think, I think they have some decent weapons and they're moving the ball. They're, they're really coming together as a team. Their defense looks okay. So maybe, you know, if Jonathan Taylor is out this week, Matt Ryan hasn't looked that great. Maybe Jacksonville gets some turnovers. They get the ball back to Trevor Lawrence and, and they get some touchdowns and they score a lot. And then, you know, Colts are playing catch up, you know, so that's another option I do like, but really I like these top guys. I think, you know, staying in these top guys, there's really nobody down here. I really like, there's some injury news. Mac Jones might be coming back. You got, you know, Zappy for the, you, we don't know if Mac Jones is in, you know, Skyler starting for Miami. We got it, you know, uh, PJ Walker starting this week, right? He's on the slate, right? Yeah. Yeah. PJ uh, for Carolina. Uh, in the, in the Rams game. 
Uh, I don't know where PJ is. Is he on here? Yeah, yeah Saberson PJ... might have. Uh, yeah, they yeah. might not have him in just yet. I don't think it's official that uh, that Baker yeah, so is out, a... but he's he's doubtful. So. Yeah, I think. I actually think he's going to be backup is what they said. P.J. Walker was starting officially. So that hasn't been updated here, guys, yet. So make sure you check back. You know, we'll get that updated, and everybody and all, all the sites should have it updated. But, I mean, he's only coming in at 4.9. He is popping a little bit more um, than people think. I mean, he's still way down to the bottom. So I really like these top guys, and we'll, we'll get into running backs probably next. Um but, you know, you, you can really stack that Kirk Cousins game. I really like Justin Jefferson and them. You know, Waddle's cheap on the other side if you do want to bring a bring back. Um, and, yeah, I really like those games. I'm going to be very heavy on this week. That probably means I'm going to be stacking guys up in that game. Um, Gabe Davis is even, you know, some of these guys in this Buffalo KC game are still owned. Uh, one thing I did want to mention with Pat, Patrick Mahomes is we really haven't found out a true target besides Kelsey. Like early this year, I was only stacking like Mahomes and Kelsey, or I've been playing a lot of Juju, but MVS is becoming a, a little bit more of an option lately. He's still finding MVS and Juju as a, you know, first year on the team. He's still trying to figure out, you know, like routes and how these guys play, where to throw the ball. So there's a lot of like learning curves going on with them. So we'll see which of those receivers come on as like a true number one, but currently Kelsey is probably the best stack. And then same with Lamar Jackson. Both these guys, these stacks, I, I like, you know, QB tight end stacks um, a lot more. So, all right, let's move on to running back, and uh, I'll let goalie lead the way. I think we got some good options this week. This is this is going to be interesting. we got some cheap running backs, and as you guys know, the cheap running backs have been killing it. The, these value backs have been really smashing. I mean, last week we had Bryce Hall, and, and he was a cash option, and he looks like he might be, might be in play at 5,800 again. But let's see what goalie's got to say. Yeah, uh, I'm with you, man. Like that's where, um, that's where most of the chalk looks to be coming from. You know, on the on the cheaper end, we got um, you know obviously Kenneth Walker and Eno Benjamin in that in that Seattle Arizona game. Uh, they're probably going to lead the way on the cheap end at 46 uh, or 54 and 46 respectively. Um, you know, they'll be north of 20 percent easily by the time uh, you know we get into the weekend here. So. Um, I've got them coming in roughly 20% as of right now. Um, so those are definitely going to be, you know, some really good cash options um, in that in that game, in that afternoon game. Um, a little bit more expensive, showing Ramondre Stevenson popping really, really hard in ownership right now. Market pretty high on him. Um, I'm seeing him with uh, my most recent run of ownership projections coming in at the over 30 percent now uh, so there's yeah. been a bit of steam on him um you know really all throughout the day in the last couple of days so um you know cleveland is, is giving it up on the ground to the tune of you know 5.3 yards of carry this season so uh that's which is third worst in the league um and again with uh with zappy back there uh or even if mac jones is back you know he may still be a little hobbled uh, they're going to want to try and run the football a little bit. And Ramondre is still very playable at 6,000. So um, some good cash options there for you. And you can even mix those guys in in tournaments. They absolutely still have upside, um, you know, at those price tags. Now, you know, Benjamin at 46, um, he's probably my least favorite of the three, to be honest. Um, not because of the price, but probably just because Arizona's offense has been terrible, right? They can't run the football, and they really haven't been able to throw the football. So um, now there is a lot of upside because Seattle is giving it up on the ground uh, pretty uh, pretty aggressively as well, um, over five yards. What are they at? Five yards flat, a carry um, as well. So there's a little bit of upside for him, but in – in tournaments, I think you could probably chase a little bit more upside with for far lower ownership uh, elsewhere. Uh, we talked about that Minnesota game. You can get to some Dalvin Cook. I think that's okay. Uh, not super crazy about 7,500, but uh, in in this particular spot, so I think I'd rather get to the passing game there. But I think that's definitely playable. Um, seeing Aaron Jones, the, I mean Packers are laying a touchdown uh, in this game here this weekend and he's 7,600 and we're, we got him at 5%, uh, Nick Chubb. Nobody ever plays Nick Chubb. We talked about him before the show. Um, 
and Cleveland has one of the best rushing offenses in the league as well. So, um, you know, that he's, he's getting 18, 20 carries every single week. And at, uh, at sub 10%, I think he's playable every single week. Um, you can, you can get to some Alvin Kamara again, you know, we're seeing him at, at about 10, 12%. Um, it looks like he is back a little bit healthier now and they're using him uh, a little bit more in the passing game. Um, now, as soon as Jameis comes back, he might just chuck it to the other team and, and just want to chuck it down the field. Um, so you got to be aware of that going forward, but I think he's still playable at 6,700 as well. Um, then we get into the, the more expensive guys like the CMCs, the Saquons, um, you know, even Leonard Fournette, I think is probably playable. His workload is, is pretty solidified down there in Tampa. Uh, they use him on the goal line. They give him, they give him, you know, 12 carries and then they, they give him eight targets a week. So, um, He's got a lot of touchdown equity, uh, and even at 7,400 at, at sub-15%, I think that's still a playable price as well. Uh, and Saquon, uh, as you mentioned, he is he looks healthy, and uh, you know the Giants, they want to run the football as well because they can't really throw the football very well. So um, I think all of these guys coming in you know, far less popular – then the super chalk of Walker, Benjamin, and Stevenson uh, are absolutely playable. <clears throat> and, you know, you can get to, um, you know, some some other super low-owned guys. Like, uh, you know, we mentioned Aaron Jones and Nick Chubb. You can get to some Joe Mixon. He'll be 8%, give or take. Um, you can play some Devin Singletary. You know, that's a good way to get contrarian, get contrarian in that, Buffalo game is to play um they to play the running back. Devin Singletary still gets a ton of work as well. So uh and he'll be one of the lowest pieces in that game. So um I think this week, you know, it, it seems like a pretty obvious construction in that a uh, I don't want to say obvious, maybe a pretty popular construction is just going to be eating the chalk on Eno and, and Kenneth Walker and some Ramon J. Stevenson um, and then kind of differentiating with, with receivers or quarterbacks or whatever. So I think a, a pretty easy way to get off of that type of build is just to differentiate at running back and then go play some, some more popular receivers or some more popular uh, quarterbacks if you want. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Um, in tournaments, I prefer getting to some guys with, you know, some really solid workloads like the Nick Chubbs, like the Aaron Jones types, uh, the Saquons, um, rather than just eating 25% ownership on a cheap running back. How about you? Yeah, that's some a lot of good takes, Goldie. I, I don't, probably don't have to do a lot of work with uh, you giving away all the good picks, right? Um, <laughs> I do want to give out my play. Stevenson last week was getting some ownership too because he was going to be the clear back, and, and, and he didn't live up to expectations. Um, so I don't say at 33% or even 35%, he lives up to expectations at all. Um, you know, on the other part, he's projected down here only nine points, but this, these projections are before the news. Most projection sites now have him up to 16% or not 16, 16 points. So that's yep. going to put him up here a little bit more with the Kenneth Walker projection, which he should be about the same roughly around this, this range. Um, but yeah, you know, so he'll, he'll be very popular as well. And then Kenneth Walker here is coming in very popular. Um, based on price, guys, these guys' workloads are going to go way up for price. They don't really have anybody. Eno was getting a lot of the work. You know, Daryl Williams is also out, and James Conner is out. So they really only have Benjamin there for the Cardinals, and they were using him last week. Walker is explosive. I'm a big Spartan fan. He's a Michigan State guy. Yep. And, and bad. Big time transfer for us at Michigan State, and he he's looked good already for Seattle. Had some nice dump off pass work. He he busted out a big run. He's explosive, guys. He gets open, he's gone. Right? If Arizona lets a nice hole go, he he's gonna hit it. He's got a lot of upside. I think at fifty four hundred, he could bust off some nice runs. Um, I really do think that. But another guy I think um, goalie mentioned a lot was Kamara getting in the pass game. Right? You know, eight catches last week at sixty seven hundred, guys. This guy's dynamite. And the biggest reason he doesn't get touchdowns is because that man, Taysom Hill, 
I tell no, you he's what, so irritating. I hate that him guy's so much. irritating me. When I'm sitting there with Kamara. Kamara <laughs> scored 27 points last week, and he ain't getting out of the goal line work as Taysom Smell is. So this guy could have 40 point upside games at 6,700 guys. He's a guy you want in your lineup. So I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, that's just too good, and, and I'm gonna pay the price. I think I really like Kamara at this price. Um, the matchups pretty friendly. I I would assume, you know. Um, the only thing about Bryce Hall is is um is um Carter still is getting some of the work right? Is he out this week or is he? Yeah, he's still in. So it's like a split backfield. Carter keeps getting some goal line touchdowns that hurts Bryce Hall, but Hall has looked great. Some of the Jets' offense has looked really good, and, and th- this isn't a game we talked about much, but like yep. you could really put a at least some, some players from this game. I think Hall and Dobbs or Hall and Lazard or some sort of correlation in that game will work for me i think um we didn't talk about much of roster construction i mean goalie just mentioned it if you're gonna have these cheap running backs you're gonna probably end up with cooper cups and high-end justin jefferson's in your lineup where if you're playing some you know saquon barclays and some leonard fournette's and some of these higher end guys aaron jones nick chubb you're gonna have to get a little different with with the build and 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 you could pull a, a bryce hall you know he's getting a little ownership but you know, some of those Packers receivers might not get as much ownership, so you can you can do a little running back receiver correlation there and get yourself the low ownership that you need, you know, to win a tournament. Um, I like to call on Devin Singletary too. Um, that was a good play. I think last week it didn't get didn't work out, but um, because Gabe Davis went off, but like Singletary can easily get two touchdowns in a game and really lower the upside of Josh Allen and, and the receivers. Um, so yeah, some of these options I really like, you know, we still got Jeff Wilson pretty cheap against Atlanta. People seem to be forgetting about him. He had a monster game last week. Um, I'm not going to forget about these guys, guys. Like these guys are good. Nick Chubb, nobody plays him. New England, you know, everyone's on Stevenson. Well, what about the passing game for New England? Jacoby Myers is back. He gets a lot of work. I know I'm giving you receivers, but you know, Nick, Nick Chubb and Jacoby Myers, another running back receiver correlation that I really like. Nick Chubb scores a bunch of touchdowns. Maybe, you know, Stevenson's phased out of the game, right? They're having to pass the ball to catch back up. So you guys got to think about these kind of builds when you're building your lineups, like, you know, gaining leverage, gaining leverage off of these, these teams. Like when Goldie talks about Devin Singletary, why are we playing this guy? Josh Allen's going to score 40 points. No, if Josh Allen doesn't score 40 points, who benefits from that? So that's when you guys got to think a little bit. It's, it's the same with running back. We talk Aaron Jones getting a lot of the work, but you know there might be a week where it's A.J. Dillon for 30 points, right? So if, if Aaron Jones sucks, who's going to benefit? A.J. Dillon or Rodgers and Dobbs and Lazard, the passing attack. you know. So I really like that tall, um, these calls. I don't even mind pairing these running backs, mixing and Kamara together a little bit. Um, in this game, I think both of the running backs could do really well in that game, as we talked about. Leonard Fournette's been a beast. Um, I do have to say Rashad White's coming in and getting a little bit of work lately. Yep. Um, so just worry about that. But it's a good matchup this week. I, I, really, I really think Pitt's, Pitt's been a bad team. But you could do a running back correlation there, too. You know, Deontay Johnson's probably going to have a big game with catches one of these days. You know, you know. Um, you got Pickens and you got, you know, Claypool there. They're pretty pretty cheap, but we'll get in receivers in a minute. Um, another guy, maybe Edwards Alaire is getting no ownership. There's been three running backs there in KC, but if he's a guy, he's, he does get some good work. Um, I wouldn't mind throwing him in there if you think Mahomes isn't going to get there in the passing game. He could easily have two touchdowns too. Um, and then maybe he, he pairs well with like a Diggs or Gabe Davis to get a little bit different too. So besides that, I think I think um, Cam Akers is out too. We should probably talk about this. Henderson will get a, a points bump, I'm yep. sure. Um, there, so there's that. Rashad White is here. McKinnon, some of these guys, you know, are are popping a little bit. Um, but yeah, these main guys are really good, and I think I think we're gonna move on to receiver. Um, so let's get it. All right, Goldie, what do we got? Receiver. All right, wide receivers. Um. I think it's going to be pretty spread out this week. I mean, you're going to have a couple of pretty obvious chalk spots, uh, right? You're going to have the Tyler Lockett's again. He's 5,600. He's just too cheap. Uh, this offense in Seattle is pretty good, man. Like, they can put up some points, um, and their defense is also not very good, right? So they're <laughs> they're they're giving it up, and, uh, you know, they're one of the worst defenses in the league as of right now, and they're one of the best offenses in the league, right up there with Baltimore and Buffalo. So um, 
you know, there should be a lot of points in these games for Seattle uh, pretty regularly. Um, so until the prices come up on Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, uh, I think you just kind of keep getting exposure to him, um, you know, at, at over 20 percent. We've got Lockett coming in as the uh, the most popular receiver this week. Um, now, that doesn't mean that, like, you should fade him or anything, but um, I think you can start to temper your your exposures to him a little bit um it it's generally pretty hard to unless the guy's cooper cup <laughs> right uh to to get there every single week with a receiver um so when when guys start to get this popular uh you know re- wide receiver still a pretty volatile position so i tend to start to get a little bit more careful with it but um you know it there's no doubt like 5,600 is just way too cheap for him right now. So he's going to lead the way in the ownership. Um, and then in the afternoon games, you're going to have right Cooper cup and Steph Diggs, kind of nipping at his heels a little bit. Um, you'll have like Rondale Moore in that Arizona Seattle game as well. He's going to garner some ownership. Um, so these are really the, the most popular guys you'll have uh, Chris Olave again. He popped last week. He's probably going to pop again this week. Um, and you know, Chris Godwin, again, he was very, very popular last week. He's going to see roughly the same 12, 15% ownership pretty much across the board again. Um, you know, so I think a lot of the, a lot of the receiver ownership is going to be kind of spread and you're going to see most of the concentration and ownership come at running back since you've got some pretty obvious free squares. Right. So, um, I think it's, again, going to be pretty easy to differentiate. You mentioned getting to Alan Lazard. I really like that play. Uh, 6,000 6, flat. Um, got him at, at, what, sub 6% right now. Uh, same thing with Aaron Rodgers. I think that's a, a really interesting game to be targeting. Like I said, there, you know, you can get to the Aaron Jones there, um, and you can get to the Jets on the other side. Like Packers – uh, they lost to the Giants last week. You know what I mean? Like, and it was a high-scoring took... game, right? There were some points in that game. Exactly. So they're giving it, it up a little bit. One too. of the better games of the week. So exactly. So I think that's that can be sneaky. Um, Packers are going to pop one of these weeks, man. And Aaron Rodgers is going to throw four or five scores. You're just going to need him. Um, and there's no better time to jump on board than when after they just lost to the giants. Right. So, um, you know, I, I do like getting to some, some really, uh, solid plays. Um, I think you can eat a little bit of the price tags a little bit this week. And, you know, generally you don't want to be paying six K for an Alan Lazard necessarily. Right. Um, or 7,500 for, for a Tyreek with a third string quarterback. Um, you know, not to say that you should be playing Tyreek, but Tyreek is Tyreek and he's 8% owned, you know? So, uh, a lot of these guys that are just super, super high upside, like Jamar Chase sub 8% owned, um, really hasn't gone off this year. Like we know he can, uh, just Jefferson, who we talked about a little bit sub 10%. So I think you can really kind of spread out your, uh, your receiver ownership and get different if you do want to be playing, that kind of chalk construction, you know, with the popular running backs, popular quarterbacks. Um, and I think that's probably how a lot of my builds are going to focus this week. Uh, we mm-hmm. talked a little bit about that, that Buffalo KC game, right. Um, and Mahomes coming in probably a, a bit less popular than he should be. Uh, you got both Juju who you mentioned and, um, and MVS, you know, really, Really only coming in at about eight ten percent ownership. I think those are really two really really good plays in what projects to be a very high scoring game. So, you know, for the most part, there's only a couple of spots ownership wise that I think you really got to be aware of, and that's uh, the Lockets, naturally the Steph Diggs, Cooper Cooper Cup type plays, uh, Rondale Moore, of course. But um, after that, I think you can really kind of spread out pretty thin. I mean, how are you looking at wide receiver this week? Yeah, I mean, looking at these prices, man, it's just nuts. Like, I mean, you're getting guys 4K, 5K Juju, more at Ronald, more chalk here, 22% 4K. He's he gets some rushing work, some sweeps and stuff. You know, this game could be a massive scoring game. This game could be a massive scoring game. And I'm kind of getting on this Green Bay Jets game a little bit too. You know, with some of the weapons there 
are relatively it, 4,800. But, I mean, Jets Lazard's ball, even man. more. What? I said Jets throw the ball, man. Yeah. Yeah, Jets throw the ball. And I, I played Garrett Wilson in his worst week this year. I'm going to tell yep. you that. I did too. Unfortunately, <laughs> I played him. Does this show? Where does it show? But he, he has big upside and some, you know, some, you yep. know, he had dropped 30 this year already, and I think he's a good play. So, I mean, you could run it back with some Garrett Wilson or some Bryce Hall, you know, we talked about. You know, these – that that might, if Bryce Hall is going to be jockey, play some guys on the other side of that game. Yep. But all these receivers are too cheap. We didn't talk about Joe Burrow, but Jamar Chase and Higgins stack I kind of like too, you know, with the Kamara run back. Like, these are going to be some of my stacks and how I approach it. And really – you know, that kind of stack is a low own stack. I won a lot of money last year with the Jamar Chase at 5% in the, um, in the power sweep yep. um, that year. I, the only problem is I, I would have took the power sweep down for 100 k if I would have made the damn pivot to Godwin in the Bucks defense that week. They went off for 40, and Bucks scored like 20 points defense. And I, I kept freaking DeAndre Hopkins in my lineup to be more contrarian, and I didn't need to be. I already had the 5% stack. I should chase went off for like 40 something three touchdowns deep bomb. I should have just went with the chalk guys got off stupid, more contrarian plays. I would have won hundred K, but I would have won by like 30 points. I, I got like up just there. I, I got up there pretty good with, with Hopkins. still, and he had like seven points versus Godwin. That was the week. Godwin was chalk and it just really hurt me And bucks defense and Leonard Fournette. Those guys all went off that game and, and Hey, that might be this week too. Right. We got Godwin at 6,100 and Mike Evans at 7K against a crap team. I think there's going to be some points there. So that might be a viable stack. Um, there's just there's just so many cheap receivers, man. This is going to be – we got Christian Kirk at 5,800. We talked about that. Talked about Jacoby Myers getting a lot of work there. Someone, you know, like the Nick Chubb correlation. Adam Thielen at 5,900. You know, DJ Moore is going to break out one of these games. He's not a bad run back to like a – you know, in that game, he, he's just dropping too many balls. He's he's had a good opportunities, and I'm really getting into this scan uh, MVS and Juju. I really don't know how I want to pair him. If I want to pair one guy each with like Kelsey, or do like a double Juju and MVS stack with Mahomes, and then run it back with Garrett Wilson. Now that'd be or not Garrett Wilson, um, uh, Gabe Davis or Gabe Davis. I that was Gabe Davis. He's probably Gabe Davis might be up here after or Diggs is 8,400. You can probably fit Diggs in with Juju and MVS. So, yeah, I mean, MVS 4,500. That's a really, really good price. That's a really um, good price. And he got a lot I mean, more work last week. You know, yeah. also, we got we to gotta watch the Cooper Cup situation too. He's questionable now all of a sudden. That's usually not good news when he comes late. But you got Allen Robinson at 4,900 here. Yes, I know he sucked. Yes, everybody in the industry is on this guy. Yes, all my best ball lineups are sucking with him. Um, so yeah, we're just we're just not looking good there. Um, I was high up on him. He was a high pick this year in best ball. It's really hurting me. Um, but I think he's gonna get it. He runs a ton of routes. He's on the field constantly. So like, he, he's he's gonna get it. Um, and then you got Tyler Boyd here. If T Higgins doesn't go, this guy's always one of my favorites. He'll get more ownership than this if T Higgins doesn't go. But he's always a staple to, to my to my lineups when I'm playing that Burrow stack. I like yep. Boyd, Chase, and Burrow. And then uh, they mentioned uh, – Goldie mentioned Olivier. In this game, you know, this game could be a sneaky game. Cincinnati, New Orleans Saints could be could be a chuck game. They both chuck. Could chuck or they both could run the damn clock out. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, Andy Dalton's um, not terrible. You know, he's got to start a started quarterback in the league for a long time here. Yeah. And um, – you know, Cincinnati, sure. they, they want to throw the football. So I think that's yeah. that's another spot that you can get to. Like It's going to be totally ignored, uh, mostly because the total is only like 43 and a half or 44 or whatever it is. So, um, But since he's laying a couple you know, on the road here, I, I think New Orleans can compete here. I think they could blow through this this total um, you know, pretty regularly. I think it's yeah. a pretty seeky spot yeah. for sure. And remember, guys, it's, it's in New Orleans, right? So it's at a dome game. It's a yep. dome game. It's usually higher scoring in the dome games. Well, that's going to be a good game. Um, Green Bay is going to be a little colder. It's going to be a weather game. Atlanta is going to be a dome game, right, with San Francisco. We didn't talk much about them. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit more. Tight end, you want to lead the way with tight end? Yeah, let's do it. Um, and, you know, last week 
I uh, I stepped on the the Kittle landmine. Um, I th- I feel like most of the uh, most of the industry is is really just kind of off Kittle for whatever reason, and just kind of waiting for him to to explode before they jump back on board. Um, well, not this guy. Okay, <laughs> like I'm just gonna I'm gonna eat it, and I'm gonna take his five or eight points every single week uh, in, until I finally spike that 35 that he drops um and hopefully i got the right combinations at that time but he um i mean we got, got him at sub five percent right now and uh that's just way too low he's he's a top five tight end in the league um and he hasn't done it obviously and he's he's got you know jimmy g back there who doesn't have a whole lot of upside as a quarterback himself but um you know, and obviously there's there's Debo and Ayuk there, and and they want to be a balanced offense. But um, you know, George Kittle is still one of their most explosive weapons, and at five percent ownership, uh, it's it's just too low. So I'm going to continue to play him. Um, but really, I mean, same kind of story here at tight end, which is really kind of typical every week, right? Where we just get like a few chalk tight ends. And and then everybody else is just kind of yeah well whatever they're a tight end um, usually it's pretty warranted right because there's I mean there's only a few guys that get enough targets to really make it playable um, so you know th- that said we we've got some like three chalk spots pretty much uh, at tight end nothing like the um, you know the 25 percent Hawkinson that we saw a couple weeks ago or the 20 percent Higby that we saw last week. But we're still seeing, uh, you know, Higby, he's, he's coming in as the most popular right now at about, you know, 12, 15 percent. Uh, he's probably going to lead the way again. And then you'll have Mark Andrews again up at the top at 7,000. I think that's still playable. You mentioned that um, Rashad Bateman's out again. We talked about it a couple of times. I, th- I think that's a, a good stack to, to pivot off of, uh, you know, some of the Josh Allen ownership that you're going to get. You can get to Lamar and Mark Andrews and, there's a, a boatload of upside with those two guys. And, um, you know, you're, you're not eating near the ownership that you're going to have to incur with, with Josh Allen and like Steph Diggs, if you want to play those two expensive guys. So, um, you know, just after that, you're going to see Zach Ertz, his price and ownership kind of week over week is starting to trickle up quite a bit. Um, and that's really because Arizona's offense has been so terrible, right? Like they, they have been hard to watch. And a lot of the target, like Zach Ertz getting a lot of work. This is yeah, like, is. this is like Philly Zach Ertz that he's getting, uh, the type of work that he's getting. So, um, he's probably going to be top three in ownership, I would say this week. And then after that, I mean, everybody else, you can, you can just kind of throw darts and, um, and hope something sticks. Uh, we talked about this Minnesota game quite a bit. I really like getting to Irv Smith. He's popping quite a bit. Um, and he'll be sub 5%. Nobody ever plays him, but he's super cheap, 3,200. I think that's a very good play. And he allows you to get <clears throat> very different. Like you were just mentioning, um, in your power sweep lineup, you don't need to get different at every single spot. You can play chalk. And in football, compared to a, a lot of other sports, um, oftentimes you need to play chalk right? Certainly with like chalk running backs because the workload is, is generally pretty solidified, right? So um, you don't need to get super different at every single position. And I think if you get to some chalky plays in the Buffalo KC game or Arizona Seattle game, I think you just get different and play an Irv Smith or play a Pat Fryermuth who's been getting a lot of work the last couple of days or the last couple of weeks rather, right? Uh, play George Kittle. Um, you know, George Kittle has all kinds of upside and, and, and again, he's going to be 5% owned. So um, if you really want to eat the price tag on Travis Kelsey, I mean, if you saw what he did on prime time and caught four scores. Now we obviously can't expect that to happen again. Right. But um, you know, he has the most upside of any tight end in the league. So um, I think it's going to be pretty spread again. And I think you can get to some different spots. Um, generally not a ton of tight ends that I, that I like a lot, but I do like, Guys like Robert Tunyon, we've been talking about this Jets Green Bay game a good bit, um, and you know Kyle Pitts is coming in questionable. Still don't know if they're ever going to throw him the football, but <laughs> um, you know, like 
Kyle Pitts is a killer, killer athlete. So uh, I'm probably going to land on, you know, step on that landmine again as well. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think we can, I think you can get spread out here a little bit and, and nobody's coming in at least at the moment more than 15%. And I think eating 15% on a, on a tight end is perfectly workable. So uh, that's kind of, kind of how I'm going to approach it this week. Yeah. I like your takes on that Goldie. I'm going to, I'm going to give a couple tight ends that you didn't talk about. Um, also if Pat Firemuth is ruled out this week with a concussion. So, Oh, is he? Oh, um, I still got he, he is, uh, that's why he's not on this list. He's already been removed. Saberson does a good job of getting the guys in and out of the portal. Pretty good. I haven't updated this in a minute. It's probably why they don't have a couple of the other guys out, but, uh, regardless, we, we've had a really good discussion tonight. Um, these two guys on the top are literally massive upside guys, but as you know, we've been seeing all these cheap tight ends every week. Someone's getting a touchdown. Someone's getting a two touchdowns well disley's had a week mo alley cox has had some touchdowns um you know evan ingram's getting a lot of looks he might be a sleeper tight end i like this stack in indy here it's also it's also in a dome game potentially they don't open the roof um but this could be a good game guys let's let's focus on that robert tanya and then goalie just mentioned we talked about that green bay jets game he gets some looks irv smith super cheap we think we think the Vikes are going to roll this game and someone's going to have to score some points. Dawson Knox coming off injury. He, he is supposed to play. still shows a Q tag. He is getting a little bit more ownership. I think, you know, from sheets projection ownership here, but I got him at 6% here. We got him at um, 4% on some other places. So we'll see where he lands, but at 3,400 guys, he is, a, he can steal some red zone touchdowns from these guys. Big time, and and I really do like George Kittle. Again, super cheap, good matchup. I really think that's a place to target this week. Ertz has also been getting a lot of looks. He's kind of hard to get off of because he's been getting a lot of red zone touchdowns, and they haven't been doing that well in the red zone. They're getting bogged down, and, and a lot of overthrows on Ertz and a lot of bad throws by Murray, so maybe maybe they connect for a couple touchdowns this week. It ends up being a higher scoring game, you know. But you know, Higby probably going to be the top chalk again at forty six hundred. He's getting a lot of looks, um, but I really, I really like this list of guys, guys. And, and you don't have to get too crazy, you know. Kate, Kate Otten for Tampa Bay looked pretty good last week. Um, Cameron Bray still questionable, so there's some guys in the bottom here that we can use. And really, really, I mean, what are we going to do with all this salary, Goldie? Are we going to pay up for defense this week because? My God, every guy that we, we talk about is 5,600, 5K, 4,500 MBS. You know, we got Kittle at 5,100. All these guys are cheap. Running backs, 4K, 5K. Where the hell are we going to spend this money? Let's let's, let's get in defense, see if we want to pay up for defense or not. What are you thinking, Goldie? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of couple of defense, a couple of teams that are, are laying some big numbers this week. Um, you know, Tampa, you just talked about, they're laying a big number against Pittsburgh. They can't move to football at all. The Steelers, um, now it got to kind of have to be a little bit aware. Uh, Kenny Pickett might, might start chucking it. Um, and this kid is, is pretty talented. Um, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's quite ready necessarily. Right. But, um, you know, just something you got to be aware, but you know, Tampa should still be able to, to kind of get after him. Um, I generally don't like paying up for a defense. I think it's a, a pretty, like, it's just such a volatile position um, that a lot of the time, you know, you, you can really just kind of spread yourself thin. I, I really like to side with Sheets' approach in that, um, you know, you just get a bunch of whatever defenses you kind of like and and you, you you cap them at no more than 15 percent uh exposure just because the the volatility is so high so um i'll probably do the same this week but i think you can get to the bucks at 3900 i don't think that's you know, a bad spot at all um green bay we we talked about uh they're also laying over a touchdown here so you know despite the fact that you know there could be some sneaky points and and some sneaky fantasy points from zach wilson and the jets um you know, the Packers are, they're going to bounce really, really hard from being so bad this year so far. So, uh, and that, and that's going to come eventually. And it could very well come against a, a, a mediocre Jets offense. Um, I don't think, I mean, I'm not super crazy about paying 4k for the Packers, but, uh, I don't think it's bad at all. Um, we briefly mentioned the, the Niners this is one of the best defenses in the league, right? 
the, the 49er, they don't give up anything through the air or on the ground. And at 3,700, I think that's there's a lot of upside uh, for them as well. Um, and the Vikings, you know, we talked about offense there from from the Minnesota side, but I think you can play some Dalvin Cook and Vikings sort of correlation teams there. Uh, I don't think that's bad. So um, I think there are, there's a couple of spots up top that you can definitely eat some salary because you're probably going to have a bunch of teams where you're just like, man, this, this guy's 5K, this guy's 5K, this guy's 3K, you know, and, and they're good spots. Um, and you're just going to have to allocate salary. So I don't think it's bad this week, you know, getting up to some more expensive defenses and kind of um, trying to capitalize on a, some pretty low ownership. Because as of right now, there's really only one defense that's coming in pretty popular, and that's Carolina at 2,400. Um, now, personally, I don't like playing uh, defenses against the Rams. I don't know about you, but. Um, yeah, I don't really care about the price. I'll probably end up staying off of that at 10, 12% ownership. Um, I think it's just a, a really easy ownership pivot that you can make in general, staying off super popular defenses or minimizing your exposure to them, uh, especially when it's not all that great a spot, right? Carolina has been pretty bad and the Rams are pretty good. So um, I'm kind of with you. I think you can spend up this week and, and really just kind of spread your exposure. I don't think... Um, you know, any strong takes on defense necessarily are, are usually very warranted um, just because there's so much volatility. So I don't know how you, uh, how are you looking at defense? Yeah, I think you made a lot of, a lot of good points. I won't go into too many more details, but you, you listed out some really good defenses here and this 3,700 up to 4k. I think these four are very viable. Um, you, you also the Vikings, uh, one you didn't mention was the Jags. I mean, the Colts haven't really shown yeah. me a lot of to like this year with their offense getting bogged down three and outs. Jags have played at a very extreme level, looked very good, had the pick six, you know, they look very good and they're a three K defense, but you know, usually I try to find one of these cheaper defenses, but I don't know if I see that this week, you know, maybe the Steelers come out and sack Tom Brady or something. You know, the San Francisco 49ers, you know, they've been a – Garoppolo could have a bad game and maybe them them at 2,500 might be viable. But I, I don't really see the 2K – D like the min defense that I would normally target. So so for me this week, I, I think I have to agree with Goldie and maybe spread it out among these mid 3K to 4K D thing. I think we're going to have the salary this year guy or the salary this week. Um, So I think paying for one of these defenses is not a bad option. And maybe my least expensive defense might be the Jags at 3K where they get a pick six off Matt Ryan or something and, and, and get a good lead in this game. Um, you know, if they're if Colts are chucking it more because they're down, more more opportunity for interceptions, I think, and, and sacks because he's, he's waiting to find a receiver open in the pocket, right? So kind of look at the games a little bit. You know, cap your defenses out. Don't load up on all these games, even though maybe the Bucks look like a more optimal optimal play here. This week, um, I wouldn't say go too heavy. You know, the Saints at twenty eight hundred maybe are currently in the uh, like an optimal build as of right now. You know, but you know, I think I think Cincinnati's going to end up getting better a little bit this year, uh, this week, and and that could be a shootout game. So maybe maybe I just stick with these top defenses and just kind of spread it around. You know, basically this is easy to spread around, right? Like if you got if you're building your lineup, you got 3900 left, you throw these guys in, or you got 3700, you throw these guys in. Or if you got 4200 left, you throw Rams or Packers in. You know, you kind of just throw in what fits a little bit and like you try to build with like this much remaining left and see see where you end up, you know. So that's really my take on the defense. I don't want to talk too much about it. Um so yeah, um you got any last minute thoughts, Goldie? Or yeah, know, man, what's uh, let's 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 talk a couple of you know really favorite stacks here, I guess. All right, um, yeah. What uh, let's see. I guess I'll start. Um, you know, we talked about it. Uh, I really like the Vikings. Uh, I think they can they could pop this week uh, pretty good. Um, I like the Vikings. Um, and I like Baltimore a good bit as kind of an ownership pivot off of the 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 Buffalo and KC game. Um, obviously the, the chalk stacks in, in Arizona and Seattle are, are fine, I think, but for tournaments, um, I really like getting to the chiefs and Baltimore. 
um, and and Minnesota, and it's kind of like a dart throw. Uh, I don't know. Give me a naked Tom Brady. How about that against the Steelers? Ooh, that's a that's a good bold take. Uh, uh, take on that one. Um, now I always like playing Tom Brady naked. Surprisingly, like in showdown, um, if he if he's going against a good team to score points, because some teams you know where the ball's going. Tom Brady th- spreads the ball around. He he yeah. he's thrown a nine different passers in a game. He's been similar to Aaron Rodgers, like without a Devontae Adams, where he's throwing it to four or five, you know, seven different guys. You know, even Rodgers in that game will throw it to Dylan, we'll throw it to Jones, we'll throw it to Lazard, we'll throw it to Tanya, we'll throw it to all these guys, right? Like he does the same thing. He's got Evans, he's got Gage, he's got Julio, he's he can throw Cade Con, and then Bray gets a touchdown. And like, you know, all these different guys are getting the ball, right? He dumps it to Leonard Fernand, and then Rashad White gets a dump off. You know, so like I can see where he's going with the Tom Brady, which I really like. That idea, and and it could be a lot of scoring. They could score, throw for four or five touchdowns. It could be a do a different guy every time. Yeah. Or that that receiver's got fifteen points, but you need you need the Alan Lazard that went off for three touchdowns in the Green Bay game, or you need the Jamar Chase for three touchdowns in that game, or you need the Mark Andrews and as a tight end over, over you know one of those cheap tight ends, where Andrews or Kelsey have you know three touchdowns each, and you're over there with Cade Cotton, Cotton in it in a stack with Tom Brady, but Tom Brady's got 40 points, but Khan's only got 12, you know? So like, yeah, you got to think about how you're building these roster constructions. So I really like the stacks that the Buffalo KC game. I'll be heavy on Baltimore. I'll be heavy on probably with Saquon Barkley run back. I yep. don't mind getting to a little bit of the saints. I've kind of talked myself into the saints and Cincy game a little bit. I think there could be some points there. I do like Alvin Kamara. I do like the Cincy side a little bit as well. Um, also, I talked myself in the Jacksonville side a little bit because I think the options are so cheap. I'll be able to either play like an expensive receiver or, or pay up at running back with a cheap stack there. Um, I also like the I've talked myself into the Green Bay game a little bit. I don't think I'm going to full stack the New England Cleveland game, but I do like a Chubb Myers to get off Stevenson a little bit. Maybe it's a passing side for the Patriots, and maybe Chubb runs the clock out, gets two or three touchdowns. Um, and I like Kittle in the Arizona or in the Atlanta San Francisco game, but I'm not as high on that game as much. I do like the Vikings goalie talked a lot about. I don't even know if you need a run back in that game. Waddle is kind of cheap. We didn't talk about him. Um, and then the Mozart might be the running back, which he's getting some love. But I've been doing a lot more skinny stacks this year, guys. Last week I had Buffalo with no run back. It seemed to would have almost worked out. Um, if you do stack the Arizona Seattle game, that could be a big shootout, but maybe if you want to take a different approach to that game, you just stack a side and don't bring a run back. You know, Arizona can throw it to Rondell Moore, Zach Ertz, and Benjamin, they could all Murray could run two touchdowns in. You know, that that could be spread out on their side where you know it's gonna go to DK and lock it on the other side. So you just stack that, or I mean Kenneth Walker too. Um, so you got those three options, I think, um, work work in your favor. So I think that's our take on the slate. It's it's going to be an interesting one. I think receivers spread out. The prices are insanely cheap, guys. Also, uh, on Sunday, check the Week 6 playbook on TrueDFS. I'll have everything laid out for you guys. This same video, the same stacks. I know we didn't do a video last week. Bobby's been out. We got Goldie this week. We were able to make a nice video of this. I'm going to have it posted for Saturday. So... By by now you've already checked it out. You've got our stacks. You got all our plays. You got Goldie's new projections in Saber Sim on True DFS projections. You're gonna want to check that out too. Um, I'll let Goldie say one last thing, and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll end it with my normal take. So what do you got for goodbyes, Goldie? Yeah, man. Uh, we'll uh, we'll have updated projections. Probably push some, um, maybe a couple of times tomorrow, and then definitely after. Uh, any late news comes out on Sunday morning, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, I believe sheets is probably going to be out this weekend. He'll probably be able to update his stuff. Um, but we'll have, uh, I'll, I'll definitely push some projections, uh, in the next couple of days, a couple of times. So, uh, I think it's a good week to, to really get different and should be a good tournament week. Um, you know, it's, it's good cash week too. You know, a lot of, a lot of really kind of obvious good plays, uh, but some really cool spots. I think that we can get different. Um, I think we uh, we covered pretty much every game, and that's really the kind of week it. That's really kind of how it stands out to me. Is that uh, you know you can, a lot of different spots you can go. So 
um, yeah, I really look forward to it, man. Yeah, you, you said it really well, Goldie. I love it. Uh, tournament week, spread it out. We've covered all the games. We got a lot. This video was really long. It's very in-depth. We covered a lot of plays. We covered a lot of things. And uh, we'll be live again um, Sunday at 11. I don't know everyone who will be live or if it will be me or maybe even Goldie come on for a Sunday. I don't know if Bobby's out again this week or she Sheets is out or both or what's going on, but I'll be available this week. So you'll be able to get me live. Um, Goldie, as he said, he'll be updating his projections. His, his aggregates are very strong. His models are very good. I've seen, I've seen these models that he's put up. He's done a lot of work and years of work on these, on these projections. So you, you guys are going to want to look at this number. You, we got all of them in the Saber Sim as I show on the screen here. And, um, my playbook will be live by Sunday as well. So, this is the team of True DFS. Me and Goldie are out. As always, guys, I hope we have an awesome week, and let's get it. And we're going to end the show.